Hello YouTube, welcome back to a, another episode of Yamakara tutorial series. Uh, in this episode we're going to be going over how to set up your own nuclear reactor. Now I'm not going to give you a blueprint on how to make a nuclear reactor or on how to set up your Corvax, Corvax enrichment process. I'm not really sure how to say that but I think you understand what I'm saying. But uh, we're going to set all that up. I'm not going to give you a blueprint and I'm just going to show you how to do it so you can do it yourself. I'm going to be doing all of this without circuits. So you can set up your very own nuclear power. In this current playthrough, I'm in God mode, so I'm kind of cheating in all the items. So I can instantly set things up and uh, go from there. So, first things first. I'm going to go over power basics. So your first power ever is going to be steam to power, generally speaking. Uh, steam engines. This is the easiest power to do, and I'm going to go over the ratio really quickly. There's a thousand different ways of setting it up, but in this video, we're going to go over everything power and then get into the nuclear. This will take just a moment time anyways. The ratio for steam power is one water pump to 20 boilers to 40 steam engines. So now that you got that underway, you know what's going on there. It's 20, 1, 20, 40 for steam to power. Next, we're going to go over to solar. Solar is another thing that's good for power. It's another uh, option you can do for setting things up. And the ratio for that is 21 accumulators to 25 solar panels 20 to 25 is close enough but uh 21 to 25 if you're going to be a purist uh next we're going to go over how to mine your uranium so some mining drills are a little bit different for uranium they have a input of liquid and they actually take sulfuric acid and they'll mine the uranium right out of the ground with a mining drill same as normal it just changes the animate graphic for it and the animation i guess as well and you just simply place that down like a normal mining drill and you have your fluid connector and it mines your uranium out. Now once you get your uranium you need to process your uranium in a centrifuge. So you place the centrifuge down and a centrifuge is going to do uranium processing. Now this is where things get interesting with nuclear power. So steam engine it's just using coal or solid fuel or rocket fuel pretty straightforward. But with uranium processing you get 10 uranium ore and you make 99.3% uranium-238 and 0.7% uranium-235. That means for every 100-238 you make, you get one uranium-235. And you need the 235 for your nuclear fuel. If you look at the nuclear fuel, it is 10-1-19. So 10 iron plates, one uranium-235, and 19 uranium-238. Now, I generally do not set up my nuclear unless I have teched Corvax Enrichment. Corvax enrichment process is an interesting recipe as well because you input 40 uranium-235 and 5 uranium-238 and you get back 41, 235 and 2, 238. So it's positive on the 235, which is the hard to get uranium. So research your Corvax enrichment process and then we set it up. I already have a system set up here. There's no, uh, no uh, circuits. It's pretty simple, straight to the point. It uh, looks a bit confusing. So what we're going to do is we're going to set one up on camera here. We're going to set one up as we go and show you how easy it can be to really set it up. So I assume at this point you started mining out uranium. So we're going to get our centrifuges here, which are quite expensive. But uh, you can have a lot of these set up. doesn't really matter. There's no harm in setting up 50 or 5 or 10. Um, I normally put speed modules in this because I don't really care about productivity because I don't want extra uranium 238. You could do productivity as well, but it doesn't really matter. Next, you're going to power it up, obviously. So we're going to throw some power on here and it's going to start processing. Uh, the first thing you will notice, though, is you're always going to get a lot, a lot, a lot of 238, like 100 to 1 ratio. So while you're waiting for your Corvax enrichment process, you're going to need to do something with all this other 235, 238, 238, too much 238. So your Corvax enrichment is this guy here. And we're going to need to wait for 40 uranium 235 to happen. So let's go set this up as we speak. It's a little confusing to kind of try and explain. So setting it up, I think, is easier. So first off, we have our input. All our beautiful inputs going right here. So he's going to get everything he needs off of that belt there. He's going to get his uranium-238 and his uranium-235 off of this setup down here. 
All right, easy. Then this setup here is gonna go wherever it, that goes to. Now we're gonna theoretically assume that he has gotten all of his two, three, five. This belt is gonna fill up, so we're gonna deal with that in a minute. But once he gets all his two, three, five, he needs to offload it. So it's gonna offload the two, three, five. And we also want it to grab the good uranium back. It's gonna offload it all there, and then it's gonna grab it all back. The excess is gonna get pushed down this line. All the excess is gonna go down here. And this is where we're gonna use priority and filter splitters. I don't know if you could do this smartly without filter splitters. Smartly, that's probably not a word, but we'll use it anyways. Throw that like that. And we have you here now. So now we have all the good uranium going this way. Maybe push it up just a little bit. One of these is enough to power a lot of nuclear reactors. So we have our one set up there and it's filtering the good uranium underneath this and the bad uranium is going down this way. So let's amalgamate our bad uranium line now. So now we have the good stuff and the bad stuff. For demonstration purposes, we're just gonna grab a little bit of this and show how this starts working. So he's gonna offload 40 of that. We can even do that. So we're forcing the good stuff down there. So now we'll watch it start working. So we wanna do this without circuits because we don't want it to be super confusing and you want it to be easy to set up. So right now we only have two splitters really. You have the one with the building that's going here and all the resources coming down here. The good uranium is going down and the bad uranium is going up top. We do need the bad uranium as well. So you don't want to quite get rid of all that. Now the building is working. When the building finishes, we'll put a speed module in it. When the building finishes, it's going to offload the belt right in front of it. And that's going to grab everything it just offloaded again. But it's not going to have enough uranium 238. So we still need a stockpile of the 238. So we have the good stuff and the bad stuff. Now this building is gonna grab everything it needs from there. So this can now be processed into our fuel, our nuclear fuel. This setup can obviously be expanded if you wanted to. And we're gonna chest it just in case for some reason it gets too much. Uh, it's not built in that, it's built in a centrifuge, isn't it? Nope, it was built in that. Just kidding, see you right there. So now we're going to get a rocket field. This also needs the bad uranium, but again, we can redirect a line for that. So now we have our good uranium. That's the only thing you really worry about, really, in the setup, is the uranium-235, the good stuff. So now you notice the bad stuff got offloaded, and it's going over here. The bad stuff. So now we have our line here of all the bad stuff. And maybe somehow we want to redirect all the bad line into here somehow with some storage so maybe we do this maybe you want some more storage and the interesting thing about this setup or when you start using corvex enrichment is you'll notice that you get way too much Way too much 238. So if we look back on a setup that I have already established, I have a big chest buffer here. Because eventually this is going to backlog on you, and you need to make sure that you don't stop the outlook, out output, or you're going to slow everything down. We've accumulated a lot there. It's good. But you want this building to keep working. You want it to keep going. So we put storage reservoirs everywhere, which is kind of like real-life nuclear, where they have nowhere to put a lot of the waste product, which is probably intentional from the factory devs. So now we have that going there, and we'll also grab an output line there. So this building gets this product as well. So he's still going, and this is still going, and everyone's happy. So you have this building offloading into a belt that's catching itself. That's really the only trick that you do for your Corvax enrichment. So it, uh, it uh, your basic centrifuge refines your uranium, goes in front of this building. And then the good ore is kind of buffered on its own and it's kept in front of the building. It grabs everything itself it can. Then the good ore is buffered again on its own line and the bad ore is pushed off to the side. You want a bigger storage for your bad ore. 
But the main point to look at on this building is it offloads, but then it directly reinserts right back into the building on the same line. So it offloads there and then it grabs everything back in. So it keeps going and going and going and going. So you never want this building to stop. You do not want this to grab this building here to grab before this building grabs everything again. Because then eventually it'll run out of t uh, uranium 238, 235, 235. Okay, so now we got our fuel going there. And I think you should sort of understand what I did there. So the building offloads and then grabs on back onto itself. Grab this. Grab you. And we're going to run this right back into there. And now that should be working. So now we're making nuclear fuel. Beautiful. So the big trick that we did with this building is the nuclear, the Corvax enrichment. It's offloading, but then it's grabbing back on top of itself. You don't even need a line like that. It could be right there. And I normally make sure it has enough inserters that if this one inserter missed, the other one can grab. Or you could do something like this and have slow inserter offload. So this inserter has time to grab everything. It's a thousand different ways you can do it and you can make this a lot longer. So over here, we have it even longer. So it has more room to grab everything. This is probably a better setup over here, but you get the idea over here of what we're doing. So you're offloading and then you're grabbing everything back and you're using priority outputs. So the good stuff goes here and the bad stuff goes there. And you're just kind of controlling where all the item goes. It's really not that difficult. Back before there was filter splitters, uh, you had to use circuits. And that was no fun. So that's Corvex Enrichment. I think it's moderately straightforward-ish. Not really, but... Probably one of the most confusing things in Factorio. Next, we're going to go over the ratios quickly for nuclear power. So now that you have your nuclear fuel, uranium fuel cell being generated because you had the Corvex Corvexing on top of itself, I guess. I guess you could say. You need to know how you're going to build your nuclear reactor. So the first thing you need to know is what are you going to do? You're going to build one reactor. You're going to build two reactors, four, six, or eight possibly. You could do eight. Eight's another way. Or you go ten, but I normally do four, personally. Four is where I go. And I will look at the ratios here for a second because the ratios on this are actually kind of important. If you build one reactor and 50 heat exchangers, it will not work. You need to know the ratios for this to work properly. To a point. I personally use this one all the time, but uh, you can go from there. So if you build one reactor, you want four heat exchangers to seven steam turbines, and that generates you 40 megawatts. Okay. If you do two nuclear reactors, which get a neighbor bonus, so they're getting a neighbor bonus by being next to each other, you can do 16 heat exchangers to 28 steam turbines, and that's going to give you 160 megawatts. That's a pretty big boost from one. It's quite a few more heat exchangers. Then you can do four, which these all get a neighbor bonus, which gives you 48 heat exchangers to 83 steam turbines, which gives you 480 megawatts. Now we're talking power. Then you go up to six, to 80, to 138. That gives you 800 megawatts. And that's all taken for the wiki. So that's exactly how that works. Now we'll show a basic nuclear reactor and then we'll build the nuclear reactor. This is pretty messy. It is kind of beaconable or tileable if you wanted to. You could grab it and build another one. And this is two reactors. And if we look at the cover over this, we have 16 heat exchangers and 28 steam turbines. The important thing to know with this setup for nuclear is the heat pipe distance. Your heat pipes actually actually have a heat on them. If you hover over the heat pipe, actually you hover over the uh, nuclear reactor, it says it's generating heat of 999 degrees Celsius. That stays... It should go to a thousand, but I think, I don't know, maybe it doesn't go to a thousand. Um, and that's going to transfer onto the heat pipes. The farther away the heat pipes are, the less heat they get. So this one's 997, 95, all the way down to the farthest one away is 980. This one over here is 99. If it goes below 500 degrees, it will not generate steam for you. So you need this to be over 500. So the only thing that you need to take into consideration when you build your nuclear reactor setup is the heat pipe distance to the heat exchanger. So it's the only thing that matters in this entire setup. You can put the steam turbines 500 kilometers away from your setup. They can be right over here. They can be 
sideways, they can be up, down, left, right. doesn't matter which direction they go or where they are. They just need, the heat exchangers need to be where the heat pipe is less or more than 500 degrees. So you cannot have the heat exchangers super far away from the reactor. So distance for that matters. That's the only thing that matters in your setup. So now we'll build a nuclear reactor setup here. Uh, we'll do a four setup. Um, a four setup, as we looked over here, is going to have 48 heat exchangers and 83 steam turbines. So setting this up is quite simple, actually. Once you've fixed your or set up your Corvex enrichment process, you can start doing this. So your only thing that you're really concerned about initially is the heat pipes and how far away they are from the reactors. These reactors are all going to get a neighbor bonus. If you hover over this here, they're getting a neighbor bonus of plus 100%. This is going to get plus 200% for being so far away or so close together rather. And then we got to do this. So now you got to put your heat exchangers down. Now, if we go back to our ratio for a second, it's 48 of these. So you have to somehow squeak 48 of these as close to the nuclear reactor as possible. Is that hard? I don't know. We shall see. We'll build a quick setup right here and see what happens. Um, you do need water as well. So you need a water input and we'll see if this works. Don't really need to connect like that, but why not? And now we look at how many we have. We have 28. And one thing I got to be a little mindful of here is the connector for our water on those sides. So we could do something like that would work. Something like that would work there. And now how many do we have? We have our over, we have 34. So we still need quite a few more. Um, if the temperature over there is fine, then the temperature over here should be fine too. This might actually be good like that. 42, and we can go up to 48. So we're close, we're very, very, very close. Um, maybe make this go down a little bit more. Rip all those out. Okay, and how many do we have now? We have 48, so this should theoretically work. Grab some pipes. So all our steam is gonna be put into these pipes here. This design is unique to this playthrough right now. I did some uh, planning ahead of time to try and make sure everything kind of worked out okay for this video and I think this uh, this should work nicely connect that to that now why would you buffer it into a chest like that um, steam buffers well you can actually do some circuit setups to make your power kind of turn on and off depending on how you're how you're pulling it but one thing you want to make sure with your one thing you want to know with your nuclear power is you are always pulling you're always pulling your fuel it will burn regardless of if you're using it or not on my coal setup so just be mindful that uh, it generally doesn't really turn off if it does turn off it's gonna take a while for it to heat back up it will lose its heat so now what we're doing is protecting our water quickly Now, unlike your steam turbines, the ratio for your water is a little more uh, not obvious. So I would suggest when you set this up is to just look at the water pipes and see if the water pipe is completely, if all the buildings are getting water. And if they're not, then add more water. There's no uh, exact science like in steam turbines. There probably is, but... I have never been told it. So we're connecting all our water. This is probably the most, the slowest part of setting up nuclear. It's connecting all our water. Once you understand that the only thing that matters with your nuclear power is the distance of the heat pipes, then everything else kind of goes really quickly. So now you might see the benefit also of putting your reactor close to the water. So now we have this here. Now we have all our 
pipes like that. Might even rip this out here. Don't need that there. And now I can connect all our steam turbines. So we need a hundred and we need 83 steam turbines. So a hundred is not quite close. 83 is the number. So we have three. There we go. Almost done. Now we do need power for these as well. Now, while it's all turning on, I'm actually going to grab the fuel line. We're going to run our fuel line over into here. This guy gets some fuel. Let it turn on. Let it start warming up. So the nuclear reactor has both an input and an output. It needs to input the fuel cell and output a used fuel cell. So not only do you just need an input, you need to also make sure that you're able to provide an output location as well. It's another thing that makes it kind of messy to set up. But here we're just showing you how to get it turned on. And this will be our output. We'll actually just go right next to this guy here. I'm not going to get a ton of output yet because I don't really have that much going in. And then we want this other line here. Maybe we'll just run it right through here. And we're blocked again. Nope. Must be smarter than the belts. So remember the input and the output, because if the building is blocked, it will not work anymore. Just like any other input and output. And now it's kind of happy. It has power, but it needs more power. So now these guys are starting to turn on. So you notice that the temperature on them is 71, 76, 78. It's going up and up and up. And we'll be able to quickly tell if this works or not based on how much... How hot the pipes are near the base. So we're gonna run this line out and out and out and out. That would theoretically go away forever. So now we gotta put all our steam turbines set up in here. And we need 83 of them according to the ratio. If you wanna do even more, um, I suggest you check the Wikipedia, the wiki for the game and it will show you exact ratios on setting all these up. And now these set up very, very similar to your normal turbines. You'll notice uh, some commonalities between the setup. The only difference, again, is the heat exchanger. The distance. The distance is what matters in order to make this work properly. And then the next thing is going to be making sure they get enough water. And then it's going to come down to making sure that your steam turbines are getting enough steam. Working and working efficiently are different things. But we're here to show you how to make it work. And then you can make the beautiful blueprints. I find that uh, discovering a lot of these items for yourself and how to set them up is the most fun of Factorio. The funnest. The most funnest. Okay, and then we can hover over it again and see how many we have. We have 51. We need quite a few more still. Our pipes still have not heated up enough. We can add another throughput here. We're doing the same setup we did with our normal power, our steam power. Why to put a space there? Why not? Some people have come up with some very, very beautiful designs for this. I've personally never used anyone else's blueprint on nuclear, but uh, there definitely are some nice ones. Now we're at 73, getting warmer. Give that some power there too. We're getting warmer as our pipes are getting warmer. Right there. You can also connect the water if you're feeling so inclined. So our pipes are now at 250. I'm actually not sure if this is too far or not. These ones are just about ready to start working out. You see the steam kick on there? So now our first ones are turning on.
and we'll be able to troubleshoot this very easily if it's working or not. So probably only half of our key pipes are working. These are still too cold. These reactors are only at 500 degrees right now, so they're still going to get kicked all the way up to 1,000. And that's really how easy it is to set up nuclear. So the Corvex enrichment is a little bit confusing, but the nuclear itself, not too bad. And that does look like it's working. Because this is only at half heat. It's at six, just shy of 600. And these are almost at 400. This entire setup should work. Um, I was a little worried. This was pretty far away. But uh, it, is, it does look like it's working. One thing to note with the nuclear setup is if I add a heat pipe right now, it will kill the temperature of all these pipes. So if you touch this in any way, shape, or form, you will eat the temperature. For some reason, it just disappears. And this is one of the really cool setups of Factorio, the nuclear. Um, once you get it going, you actually watch these pipes glow at nighttime. And there you go. So we got a little baby nuclear reactor over here of 28. And we have a bigger one over here of 87. So I'm actually one off. But pretty close. Or actually, I'm actually over. I'm four over. Horrible. Horrible. What kind of a tutorial is this? And uh, now we're making power. Now our power is up to 830 megawatts of power. With these two little nuclear setups going on. So we have our 480 and our 160. Plus all the other power I'm generating. And uh, I showed you how to set up a basic, basic centrifuge Corvex process. And it looks like it's still going. Um, it hasn't stopped since we started this little setup. It's made thir 37 and it's just slowly chucking along. And it should work forever. Eventually these will jam up, but this is the only thing I w bid you worry about is the uranium 238. I normally just make massive buffer piles for it. It's like the real life nuclear. What do you do with it? I don't know. Build more. Build more pits and dump it into the pit. But yeah, hopefully this guide uh, helps you out and the ratios can guide you as to what you need for factorio nuclear power. It uh, can be a bit intimidating, but setting up your Corvex enrichment is as simple as doing a couple of splitters and making the building offload and load back into itself. And just a couple splitters to kind of balance the lines out after. That's it. Just play with it. See what happens. And uh, I hope this guide helps you. And if it does, throw a like in the comments. Throw a like or comment. Either or. And uh, until next time, this is the Amakar. Ciao for now. Thanks for watching.